Hello, hello, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today, I basically thought that I would bring you a reading vlog because I haven't filmed one in absolutely ages. And you know what? The sun is shining, it's a gorgeous day. I've had a pretty productive day so far, actually. I did start a book um, already and I've absolutely been flying through it. I've read 170 pages of um, The Woman in the Purple Skirt. So I have about 50 pages left of this book to go. I woke up super early this morning because I booked two French classes for 7 and 8 a.m. I do those on Lingoda. I am currently, hmm, 16 days into my 60 day challenge. So I've done at least one lesson every day for 16 days so far. And if I do it for 60 days, then I get my money back. So I'm really, I'm trying, you know, I'm really trying to do this. And it's been a good motivator for me. Anyway, um, I also tidied my flat. So I've got some friends coming around later this evening. And you know, tidy apartment, tidy mind. I also, okay, this is something I did. As I was kind of tidying, I decided that I would organize these books into a rainbow. And I think I hate it. Like, because the rest of this bookshelf is so kind of neutral and plain, these didn't really stick out before, but now that I've put them in a rainbow, they really do. So I think that I'm going to change that back immediately. It's all about trial and error, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, I hate it. Even looking at it now, no, I don't like it. I, I need to like mess that up a bit. But the main purpose of filming this reading vlog is because the next book that I'm gonna move on to later today, once I finished this one, is Idol by Louise O'Neill. Now I actually have a signed copy of this book. Um, there it is. I bought this at Hay Festival. Um, I didn't actually meet the author at all. I just saw that it was on the table of like signed copies. And I heard about this on the grapevine because it's a book about an influencer. And I'm very, very intrigued by that because there have been a few books in the, in kind of recent years about influencers, but they've usually been written by influencers, like the kind of YouTuber books. Whereas this is written kind of more by like a mainstream author who is not themselves an influencer. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of react to this and film a little reading vlog and share my thoughts on how well I think it depicts the sort of influencer industry. So, well, let me read you the blurbs of these two books. Um, so firstly, we have The Woman in the Purple Skirt. The woman in the purple skirt is being watched. Someone is following her, always perched just out of sight, monitoring which buses she takes, what she eats, whom she speaks to. But this invisible observer isn't a stalker. It's much more complicated than that. It's very kind of odd and strange and yeah, it's about kind of obsession and infatuation and actually it's kind of ironic because I've been like obsessively reading through this just as much as there's a kind of obsessive stalkery character in the novel. This is by Natsuku Imamura and it is translated by, where's the translator's name? Oh, there we go. Translated from the Japanese by Lucy North. And I think it's okay. It's weird because I am very intrigued to kind of see how this wraps up and how it ends. But so far I'm not necessarily like blown away. It's kind of about this, uh, the woman who wears the purple skirt um, and she has a job kind of working as a cleaner at a hotel um, and it's all told from the perspective of someone who is stalking this woman and kind of keeping tabs on her every movement. So it's kind of a bit like ominous and creepy and weird, but I like that. That's the kind of thing I eat up. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing so far this morning. I've just been sitting on my balcony and reading. So I think let's head out here and finish it off. There it is. We've been having a bit of a kind of heat wave, so it's actually very nice to have some clouds today. <laughs> and I love watching the trains go past. Okay, finished the book, and this is like a solid three stars from me. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, but I'm leaning more towards, yeah, I thought it was cool. It definitely does have you in the palm of its hand because it's quite fast paced, and the story, kind of what you think is happening, slowly begins to unravel. The ending was pretty decent. It does definitely have a bit of a kind of crescendo in the final, maybe like 30-ish pages. And I do think maybe if you're like in a bit of a reading slump, you need something to just like get through in one or two or a few sittings, this could be a good one. Just because it does kind of have that pace to it. That matches my t-shirt, does it? No, not really. A little bit disturbing, pretty voyeuristic, and definitely very kind of quintessentially Japanese in its approach to storytelling. There's just this really unique way of telling stories in a lot of translated Japanese literature where they're kind of this like microscopic kind of character study or analysis or kind of satire all about one specific character. Sometimes that will focus on someone who's a little bit odd and kind of stands out from the rest of society like we have here and then other times it will be someone who's completely so normal and always I think through that one kind of character observation you end up having sort of a wider uh, conversation about Japanese society, but also society in general. So yeah, that was The Woman in the Purple Skirt. Which I will begrudgingly put back on my temporary 
<laughs> rainbow bookshelf. To be fair, this one was quite necessary because it kind of like tied us from, from green to yellow. I'm kind of working with what I have here. I don't have that many books uh, in Paris. And now it is time to sink my teeth into Idol. Have I even said the name of this book at all in this video yet? It's called Idol. Let me try and one-handedly, there we go, read you the blurb. Follow your heart and speak your truth. For Samantha Miller's young fans, her girls, she's everything they want to be. She's an oracle, telling them how to live their lives, how to be happy, how to find and honor their truth. And her career is booming. She's just hit 3 million followers. Her new book, Chased, has gone straight to the top of the bestseller lists, and she's appearing at sellout events. Determined to speak her truth and bear all to her adoring fans, she's written an essay about her sexual awakening as a teenager with her female best friend, Lisa. She's never told a soul, but now she's telling the world. The essay goes viral. But then, years since they last spoke, Lisa gets in touch to say that she doesn't remember it that way at all. Oh. Her memory of that night is far darker. It's Sam words against Lisa's. So who gets to tell the story whose truth is really a lie? Uh, that's, yeah, okay. That's gonna be very interesting. I guess she's a kind of like, Gwyneth Paltrow sort of figure. I don't know, I'm not that familiar with the kind of wellness influencer space, but I guess that's kind of where uh, she sits. I mean, she's laying down there. That, that looks like quite a nice little life. But yes, I am gonna read this book and I'll give you some regular updates and it'll be a good time. Okay, two chapters in now and I've had two realizations. The first one is that, um, so my, my laundry basket is like up here on my mezzanine, like my bedroom is up there. And this morning when I was tidying, I threw a pair of underwear and a pair of socks up to my laundry basket up there. And I've just realized that they're kind of like hanging here. So I imagine they've been in the background of quite a few of the shots so far, but you know what? We're, we're keeping it real. There's my dirty boxes. <laughs> the other realization that I've had is that although the character is a kind of influencer, social media is a kind of secondary thing to her. Like she's a writer first and foremost, kind of like a wellness guru writer. So if you are going into reading this book thinking it's going to be about influencer culture, I think it kind of is. And I'm, I'm getting the vibe that it sort of is specifically kind of focusing on white feminism, but it's not necessarily a spotlight on the influencer industry so much as like just putting anyone on a pedestal and what comes with that and what their experience of it is of getting her POV as this person with a following of like 3 million. And it opens in a really interesting way because it opens with her kind of doing a talk on a stage and so interacting with the people that she um, kind of appeals to online. But interestingly, it's actually in the flesh rather than like a live stream or um, it's not about her like posting on social media, it's about her hosting a live event. So I thought that was interesting because she kind of gets to see a bit of a microcosm of her own audience sitting in front of her and she definitely acknowledges and realizes that most of those people are white. And it's kind of like a book launch that she's doing and so all her publicists are like, okay, let, let's make sure we get some like non-white faces in all the pictures and stuff just so that people can't dismiss you as like a white feminist or like a feminist who only appeals to white people. So, you know, there's some interesting conversations going on. I'm very intrigued to see where it goes. We'll see, I'll keep you updated, but I'm gonna head to the shop now because I need to get some lunch. By the way, this is my little um, writing setup. So I've got my got my water bottle, contact lenses. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the camera is not necessarily an essential for writing. I just happen to have it right there. My spectacles, my planner from inkoutsidethebox.co.uk, baby. Oh my God, that was nearly a disaster. Um, I just have a bunch of pencils for annotating and underlining, some pens, and I love sitting here and writing with this big canvas right in front of me. Yeah, it's kind of an ideal little setup. Okay, I'm like four chapters in, and what I have to say is that I really like the writing style. I think the way that Louise O'Neill writes is very, very engaging. And also, you know with some books how you're like, at the halfway point and you're still kind of in what the blurb said, like, that's not the case with this book. The, everything that happened in the blurb has already happened. I think, like, even pretty much by the end of chapter one, we'd already found out all of the information that was on the blurb, which to me says that the rest of this book is going to be action-packed. But yeah, it's very, very readable, and now obviously every bit of information that we're getting is brand new because we haven't already read it on the blurb. I'm trying to think of an example, like, The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki, which won the Women's Prize this year. It takes about 300, 350 pages to just get past what we already know from the blurb. So none of the events that occur are really like new information if you've read the blurb. Whereas here, everything that we're told before reading the book that made us pick up the book has already happened literally by the end of the first chapter, if not like halfway through the second chapter. So yeah, intriguing. Another update, I was just reading the book and I didn't expect to get three therapy, but there's a section where she's talking to a therapist and the therapist says to her that you should not underestimate how much losing friendships when you're young and like your early friendships, if those friendships suffer and have 
kind of negative ending points. She's like, do not underestimate how much that can impact you as an adult and like how you approach friendships, how you trust people. If you, when you were younger, your like formative friendships went a bit tits up and you had a negative experience with them, that can actually really impact you as an adult. And I was like reading this like, oh my God, yes. I think if you've ever had a friend treat you like absolute shit, that will really resonate with you because it really does impact like the way that you trust people, the way that you give yourself over to people still as an adult, like even, I don't know, like eight years later or something. <laughs> Am I speaking from experience? I just enjoyed that little section, that little remark. And I was like, I was reading it like, yeah, I wanna share this with you guys. So anyway, um, I'm just, Reading through, getting some life advice, feeling good. <laughs> okay, so no reading updates, but food updates. By the way, Sharko pressed me this tote bag and it is now, it goes everywhere with me. I even, <laughs> I bought a t-shirt that matches it because <laughs> this life is too short not to buy t-shirts that match your tote bags, okay? Anyways, I am going to a restaurant tonight, but we have a reservation for 10 p.m. It's this like amazing Italian restaurant apparently that's really, really hard to get a booking at, but I managed it. And because my friends are coming to my place before we go there, because I don't live that far from the restaurant, um, I thought I would do a kind of like platter um, so that we're not starving hungry by 10 p.m. Because that's pretty late to eat, right? So I have some crisps, um, obviously a baguette, um, some kind of like cheese straws, hummus, obviously. Holy guacamole! This is the best thing ever, tartar. It's like a garlicky, herby, creamy kind of spread, and it's heavenly. Um, and so I bought some, oh, where are they? Bellinis, and I'm basically gonna spread this on here and then add a little bit of smoked salmon, which is here, just bought a little small one, and then also I got some ham. I've bought loads. Oh, I've also got some like little falafel pieces, cucumber, concombre, what else? And some carrots. Basically, I bought loads, but because I'm gonna do a little bit tonight and then I thought the rest of it I can have for like my lunch over the next couple days. So I know that looks like quite a lot of stuff. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But yeah, it's gonna go quite far. And I thought the more stuff that I can get, like the more variety on the plate, the better. And then I'll just save everything else to eat over the rest of the week. So uh, yeah, basically that's my lunch for the next couple days too. So normally I would go for a kind of wooden plank, a little board to put everything on. I don't have one of those in this apartment, but I do have this big bowl. I don't think it's gonna look as good though, but the other thing I have is this sort of decorative thing, which I'm thinking maybe I could use those little bowls and then put the other stuff around. Do you know what? I'm gonna do that. I think that's quite cool. Just need to kind of give it a little bit of a wash <laughs> because I don't know how long this has been there. It's also quite precarious, so this is not a good match with a very clumsy person like myself. I'll see what I can do. I'll show you the results, whether they're as good or shit. Okay, listen, not bad for a little quick turnaround. <laughs> not bad for a boy with no talent. These are the little like garlic and herby salmon bellinis. Got all sorts of things to dip in hummus and guacamole. We've got ham. We've got it all going on. Now I'm just hoping that my friends are going to turn up pretty soon because I am <laughs> finding this pretty hard to resist, not going to lie. This is my little outfit of the evening. I bought this very funky shirt in Zara. At least I think it's funky. It's so detailed. I think it's really, really cool. Maybe you won't agree, but there's like a lot going on. I think it's fun. My favorite bit is like this one sleeve with like the sun and then this thing. I think that works pretty well. Also, I have like a battle wound on my arm because I was in the south of France and we were playing badminton and I just overcommitted. Like, one thing about me is I'm gonna get competitive over things that do not matter. So we're just playing this like friendly little game of badminton and I was like, for some reason, going all in. And one of my friends was filming and I do this like heroic shot as I'm falling to the ground, I still hit it back over the net and then like, skidded. And I was like, you know what, silver lining, it's on camera, so at least I can show you guys. He didn't press record. He didn't press record! So all we have is the clip of like, as it turns away from me, and he's like, oh man, I didn't press record. <laughs> so you just have to take my word for it that I have like battle wounds on my elbow and also on my knee. And for what? Like there was no need. We were actually literally just wrapping up. We'd actually finished the game of badminton that we were playing and we were just like messing about afterwards. So. <sighs> It is what it is. I am, however, now approaching the halfway point of this book, and I'm genuinely really, really enjoying it. Basically, the person that we're following, literally, on Instagram, but also through the book, she is this real activist for victims of abuse speaking out. She's always advocated for believing victims, and now someone has come forward against her, and there is no concrete way of how to prove her own innocence, so it's kind of like, she now has to assess how she should behave as someone who has a claim against her. And post Me Too movement, I think that's a very interesting 
uh, kind of nuance to consider. And it's also representing through various characters all the different attitudes that come with someone coming forward. You know, there's people who immediately dismiss them, there's people who believe them and start a kind of like hate campaign against the uh, abuser, the alleged abuser, I should say. But it's very interesting seeing it from like lots of different perspectives. And I mean, we'll find out what what the truth is very soon. That's probably all the reading that I can get done today. But again, I'm still enjoying the writing style and it's quite like fast paced, but also lingers on details and these thought provoking conversations that I'm, I'm enjoying reading about because they are just very, very relevant and important themes. So yeah, um, it's been an interesting book so far. And now it is time for me to be the host with the most. I'm trying to decide whether to go for these trousers. They're like very, very funky um, and like pleated or go for like black jeans. Unfortunately, you can't help me with this because by the time this goes out, the event is gone. Okay, so uh, it's the next day now. You may have noticed I'm still in the same outfit. <laughs> After dinner, we maybe went out and maybe I didn't come home. Paris walk of shame, anyone. Thank you, thank you. So anyway, I'm gonna shower now and get dressed and then carry on with the reading vlog. This was a curveball. Okay, I'm showered, I'm dressed and I feel reborn. So I am going to sit here. That's a good angle, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and power through this book because I'm very intrigued to see where it's going. It's very ambiguous so far. Okay, I just finished reading Idol. I must have been sitting there for the last maybe 30 pages with my jaw <laughs> hanging open. Cause damn, this, that was a well-written ending. This book is all about delusion and the kind of idea that if you tell yourself a lie so many times, eventually you'll kind of start to believe it yourself. I don't want to give spoilers, but all I'm saying is Samantha Miller, who is the kind of lead protagonist here, is such a well-crafted character. Because there's so many levels to this where the whole time, even though she's the kind of character you're following, you start to question like, wait, do I trust her? Is she actually a hideous, terrible person? You kind of watch how she manipulates people in real time, but simultaneously, she's trying to kind of prove to herself that she's a good and morally sound and correct person. This was very, very interesting for reasons other than why I picked it up. I kind of thought this would be quite an interesting exploration of like the influencer industry. It's much more about people who are put on pedestals. A little bit about cancel culture, massively about manipulation and sort of a fall from grace. So yeah, very, very cool book. I think I'd give it four stars out of five. It's fast paced, it's a very captivating read and it has a banging ending, so yeah. And well, what I would say is if you need to like a character in order to like the book, Maybe don't pick this one up because you're probably not going to find that here. It's also about appropriation of cultures and language, certain rhetorics which are used to empower people often aren't even believed or followed by the people who are kind of sharing them, expressing them, spouting them. Yeah, very addictive, very compelling. Um, that was idle. Okay, I kind of forgot that I needed to end the video. I've just been sitting here eating my protein bar and writing for my own novel, which is good fun, you know? I've been on a bit of a roll today, actually. I've been, uh, I've kind of been in the flow. Um, let me check. I've actually written 5,700 words. I, they may not be good words, but I have written them. Um, I was kind of bulking out chapter two of my book, so yeah. That's all I can say. I am going to spend the evening making some TikTok content because I'm doing this like book club over on TikTok where we read Persuasion by Jane Austen uh, this month. So basically each month we're gonna have a different book that we all read. There's like five uh, TikTok creators and it's the first time TikTok I've done something like this. So it's a really cool opportunity. Um, the first uh, like group live stream is gonna be on the 3rd of August at 7 p.m. So um, if you have time to read Persuasion between now and then, please do come and join. But I need to make a TikTok kind of like promoting the live stream and sharing my thoughts on Persuasion. So I'm gonna write up a little kind of mini script, I guess, for that. Cause you know, you gotta be concise and succinct on, uh, on TikTok. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. I'm then meeting some other friends for dinner tonight. Cause you know how it is, um, that's Paris. However, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed another little reading vlog. You can subscribe to this second channel if you're new here uh, or head over to my main, head over to my Instagram. You do you, do whatever you want. So thank you so much for watching this video, for this little reading vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos from me and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.